All right, welcome back to Fuck It Sucks, a podcast, episode 153. Today on the show, the great TikTok debate of 2024 continues. Richard Rapoy and I are going to chime in. Then, in Schizo Corner, is Emmanuel Macron's wife really a man? Find out. Then after that, in Cringe of the Week, we have a Chick-fil-A freakout that will make you wonder... Who are the real privileged people in our society? And last but not least, in Urban Decay, black women are under attack, but we are going to tell you who's actually doing all the attacking. All this and more, it's Fluckus Talks, a podcast, episode 153, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's what the stocks the podcast featuring Richard Rap. All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, you know about Sierra Whiskey Company, the folks that brought us under tech, the revolutionary boxers that are changing the game, my favorite boxers, the only ones I wear, the right-wing apparel company that are show watchers, who we all love. Well, I have a big announcement. They have brought in the products they're offering, and they now make T-shirts, socks, joggers, and sweatshirts, all made in America with that same rugged spirit we've all come to enjoy. Their socks are made of battle weave wool that's five times stronger than Merino. Their ring spun cotton hoodies and joggers are dangerously comfortable and every Patriot needs the EDC t-shirt three pack. And remember, Undertack isn't your typical men's boxers. They're made out of Modal, which is like cotton, but a little bit better. It's 50% more moisture wicking. It's antibacterial. It's super light and comfortable. The waistband is fantastic and moves with you. They stay in place. They're sturdy and they're also fade and stretch resistant. Not to mention Sierra Whiskey Co. also donates a portion of their profits to companies that are in the fight against human trafficking. That's a full 360 win. So stock your drawers today. We all need underwear and t-shirts and hoodies and joggers and socks. Tell them Fleck has sent you. Go to undertack.com. That's U-N-D-E-R-T-A-C.com. And use code Fleck is 20 at checkout for 20% off site-wide. Exceptional comfort, twice the guarantee, and a fraction of the price. Undertack.com is the website. Fleck is 20 is the code for 20% off at checkout. They support the show. They're major show watchers. Let's support them right back and stock our drawers. Now let's get into house. All right. Thank you to Undertack for sponsoring Sierra Whiskey Co. I'm not just saying this. Some of the most comfy merch I've ever worn. They sent us a bunch of stuff, sweatshirts, socks, everything, T-shirts, yeah. and we wear it all the time. It's fantastic. It's called comfy shit. Really comfy, comfy shit. All right. How goes, Richard? <laughs> All right, joke number one. <laughs> Cross it off. <laughs> Excellent bit, brother. I can tell uh, oh, this is going to be a good one. We're going to have a good one today. That is uh, definitely the truth. All right. We have a good script. We have a great housekeeping, uh, a little bit of schizo stuff, good uh, solid cringe, urban's long, and then uplifting. Yeah. Uh, maybe may have phoned it in on uplifting today. Hey, we got we we'll fill it with the other stuff. Yeah, all right, we'll deal with that when yeah. we get there. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys at the end. All right, first things first: the TikTok ban. Everyone is talking about the TikTok ban, uh, and I'm just gonna kind of go for it here. Go ahead. There is a certain thing you can do when analyzing politics where if you don't feel like reading the bill or fully looking into it, mm -hmm. you can kind of just vibe it based on who's voting for it and who's not. So as of right now, we got Trump, Tucker, Elon, and Rand Paul saying don't ban TikTok. Okay. And then we have Joe Biden, Dan Crenshaw, the ADL, the Uniparty, and Ben Shapiro saying they do want to ban it. Wow. So that's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> so don't ban it. Yeah. And also, if you ban it, it gives the president the ability to decide which apps live and which apps die, which apps are public uh, available to the public and which ones aren't. Uh, so if you do that you know immediately it's going to be Twitter and then Rumble and stuff like that. Uh, truth. Yeah. It'll just be gone. It'll be toast. It'll be used against us. The only bipartisan thing that's happened recently is this, the banning TikTok, and then sending money to Ukraine and Israel. That's yeah. the only three things that Congress can just unanimously agree on with a few dissenters. Uh, yeah. Kind of a red flag. 
Exactly. It is a red flag. And you're getting like these fake, uh, these fake angles of like why we need to. And it's like, oh, it's because of China and they have our data. China already has all of our data. Yeah, our data is wide open. Yeah, all of our other data from all our other social media companies that goes all over the world as it is. So it's not really a data thing. And then, you know, China buys all our farmland. China sends fentanyl across the border. We're going to crack down on China for this because it's time to crack down on China. Doesn't sound right. And also, the ADL wants to ban TikTok because they are not able to control the narrative on it. Uh, listen to this uh, recording of John Greenblatt, Jonathan Greenblatt of the ADL. All right, so it's a TikTok issue because people are getting information and making up their minds on political issues. Yeah, and you know what? The Hamas tards, we don't agree with them. We don't really care about either side, but, you know, it seems interesting. The timing is always fascinating, right? Uh, Because didn't Trump try to do this, a divest, uh, TikTok Chinese investment divestment? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden now it's happening, and uh, I don't know, suspicious. Yeah, suspicious, but when looking from the high up view, I don't really need to sign with Dan uh, side with Dan Crenshaw and Joe Biden and the Uniparty and the ADL and Ben Shapiro on anything. Yeah, that's easy. That's yeah. the easy part. All right, moving on. Uh, North Carolina's governor, mm-hmm. uh, he just did an ad for sports betting. We're gonna let that play in the background. Uh, But can you read that tweet he did? Yeah, Governor Roy Cooper said sports betting is now legal in North Carolina, and I'm taking the Canes to win the Stanley Cup. So that kind of got dystopian pretty quick. Like, yeah, this wave of online gambling and gambling through an app and in secret and hiding your losses from your wife and all this kind of just uh, spread across America like wildfire. And in a certain point, it's like, all right, the gambling lobby's winning. But the governor basically running a commercial. Yeah, I'm gambling? the governor of North Carolina, and I only smoke Marlboro Reds. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's crazy. Well, how did this happen so quick? Very right? dystopian. And the future of content, too, is going to be like people hitting it big off of multi-leg parlays. Like That's the only hope for a lot of the young men who aren't dying from fentanyl. Yeah. They're yeah. Up, if you up, make it through the fentanyl, <laughs> it's like a maze. And you make it through the fentanyl maze, and you're like, all right, a free deposit. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Five hundred dollar match. I saw my buddy put twenty bucks and he made thirty thousand. Well, it wasn't my buddy; it was some guy on the internet. Yeah. No, I don't know if it was real or not. And you see the people who click like the plinko where the balls fall into like the multipliers. Like yeah. everyone's just gonna plinko their life away trying to get out of this dystopia we're it's in. The only way out of the inflation rat race <laughs> is to hit a twenty leg parlay, right? Yeah, that's what it seems like. And obviously, when you do gamble, you have all these horrible stories. Like you hear the good ones. Oh, I bet twenty bucks and won twenty grand. There's a million stories that go the other way of people losing more than they could afford to lose, especially on Reddit. You have a few headlines here, right? Yeah, this is from the Gambling Addiction subreddit. I lost $29,000 tonight, my entire life savings, 26 and as stupid as can be. Had a relapse today and managed to lose roughly 100K. 36, male, down 165K this month. I lost 100K, don't know how to tell wife. Wedding in a week, and his account is now negative. That's from the fiance's perspective. Mm. <laughs> so people are just getting slaughtered out here, and there are certain people, like, obviously there's normal people out there, right, who can go, oh, I'll bet on the Bears. I'm a Bears fan. I'll bet on the Bears this weekend. Make it interesting. Um, and some people can handle it, but then there are just some impulsive, degenerate gamblers waiting to be unearthed who haven't awoken that in them yet. Mm-hmm. And now the North Carolina governor saying, come on down to the slaughterhouse. And that's why I think it was better when like the general public what didn't really have access to gambling. Yeah. Like back when you had to get a VPN and then like know how to work crypto or a bookie even back you know? in those days. And you can kind of like if those who wanted to seek it out could seek it out. 
now it's going entirely mainstream. You see Drake on uh, Steak t- t- always doing uh, ads. Troy and- Aikman is like saying the odds. Uh, like yeah. they're a 30 point favorite here. And it's like, what? <laughs> it's like Troy Aikman telling me to bet the under. Tell me about the quarterback. What, what happened, right? Something bad happened. Yeah, America got away from us pretty quick. So, and then also one of the things I've noticed is this really affects white kids a lot. Obviously, mm-hmm. it affects everybody. But the white man in America who's already dodging fentanyl, racial discrimination in employment, all that sort of stuff. I, I see a lot of English and Irish kids get totally down and addicted to gambling. Yeah. I don't know. It's just anecdotal, but, um, you know. And then you have groups like Barstool who whose number one advertisers are gambling. Yeah. So then you kind of have like the entire Barstool audience thinking it's funny to like binge drink and gamble and do cocaine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, <laughs> what? to be fair, those things. I don't know. For a certain group, they can be yeah, fun. They can. they can also ruin your life, right? They can also ruin your life. So just very dystopian to see the governor himself doing this. And I, I yeah, I bet the Canes to win. Like yeah. what? Show what? us, show us who donated to your campaign, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, moving on. Speaking of governors who let us down, Christy Nome, yeah. South Dakota. Uh, she passed a new anti-Semitism law. Can you read the headline? We are seeing an alarming spike in anti-Semitism here uh, in the U.S. and around the world. South Dakota will do all we can to stand with our Jewish brothers and sisters. So I guess she's trying out for the VP job. She wants to be Trump's vice president. <laughs> Is that how you get installed? <laughs> I think that's how you get approved from the higher up. I saw somebody tweet that there were less than 400 Jewish people in South Dakota. Yeah, when I looked it up, I think it said 250 Jewish people. So mixed numbers there, but thanks, Christy. And then can you give us a little bit of the background from that quote? Uh, she signed a bill into law on Thursday. Um yeah, for state purposes, the International Holocaust Remembrance Association's working definition of anti-Semitism. So ever since the horrific terror, t- terror attacks on the state of Israel on October 7th, we've seen a shocking spike in anti-Semitic acts of hatred around the world, including some isolated incidents right here in South Dakota. I'm very proud to sign this historic bill, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So because of the terrorist attack on October 7th, mm-hmm. where Jewish people, I think 1,300 Jewish people were killed at the concert, mm-hmm. the Jewish people said we're being genocided, you know? And then since then, I think f- over 50,000 Palestinians have died. Half of them are children. Um, so at one hand, they're like, oh, we're being genocided. We need help while committing a genocide, but then everyone thinks the genocide is against the Jews because of all the public support and narrative from the media and the PR. And then... It's an ugly situation, right? Yeah. It's just a greasy, ugly situation. Israel got attacked. They're attacking back. And then it's like everyone's supposed to pick a side or something. Yeah. I'm going to sit this one out. Exactly. I have nothing... That I have no interest in either side. Mm -hmm. I have nothing for me from either side. I have no allegiances to anything but America. But it makes you wonder, you know... 50,000 plus have died. Half of them are kids. But then we're told, oh, that's OK. They're terrorist supporters. They're basically terrorists adjacent, which, OK, fine. If that's the angle, OK. But then why is Benjamin Netanyahu telling the West to absorb these migrants now that are displaced from all the destruction? Either they're innocent or they're terrorist adjacent. And then if they're terrorist adjacent, then they can't come here. Yeah, Period. but I guess saying that is going to get the South Dakota police to knock on the door. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're coming. Come track Sheriff's, us down. <laughs> Sheriff's Department. Yeah, so that doesn't fully make sense to me. Uh, and but- other governors have done similar things, like Ron DeSantis did something like that. Um, and it's just like, what? what are we prioritizing here? It takes days to draft a bill, legislate, do all this stuff, and we're wasting time. And America has a lot of issues that are going yeah. unaddressed, right? We got plenty of stuff to worry about. Yeah, thanks, Israel. Uh, thanks for infringing the, on the First Amendment. Yeah. Let us know when you need money in an award to fight. We'll, we'll, we'll sign the thing right away. Our checkbook is waiting. Yeah, exactly. Moving on. Speaking of, Ben Shapiro, he's in some hot water because he the other day said they should raise retirement age and people should work later into their lives. Let's let it rip. And let's be real about this. It's insane that we haven't raised the retirement age in the United States. It's totally crazy. Joe Biden, if that were the case, Joe Biden should not be running for president. Hey, Joe Biden is 81 years old. The retirement age in the United States at which you start to receive Social Security and you are eligible for Medicare, is 65. Joe Biden has technically been eligible for Social Security and Medicare for 16 years, and he wants to continue in office until he is 86, which is 19 years, past when he would be eligible for retirement. No one in the United States should be retiring at 65 years old. Oh, yeah, we got to keep working into your later years. 
Uh, so we can we can use that money for Israel and Ukraine, probably. Yeah, let's just dump the money, burn the cash straight into an incinerator. And it's like the first thing you think of when he says stuff like this, obviously, so Social Security and retirement age are kind of two separate issues. But we're talking about like plumbers, contractors, a roofer, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, go till you're 70. You'll get bored. Yeah. If you can't retire, you know, he yeah, kind of says it like as a. Uh, people get bored or they deteriorate then when they're retired. And it's like, what about the people currently deteriorating while they're working? Yeah, exactly. Who are trying to get to like the light at the end of the tunnel so they can enjoy their remaining years. Like some painter who's got John McCain arms. You can't bring him up past <laughs> yeah. here. And it's like, yeah, raise the retirement age. Ben Shapiro, computer talk guy. But if you stop working and stop making money, your life's going to have no purpose. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's just you guys. <laughs> yeah, I have grandkids. I have six grandkids, you know? Yeah. Exactly. We need the money for third worlders, hotels, mm -hmm. and Israel's wars. Yep. So absolutely. Got to keep working, mom and dad. Sorry. All right. Moving on. Ken Buck steps yep. down. He's a congressman, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he was coming up for re-election, but instead of doing that and stepping down later and just having another election, he steps down now, yeah. which is very weird. Can you read the Charlie Kirk tweet? Yeah. Ken Buck resigning next week. Shocking out of nowhere. This gives Republicans a one seat majority. This is after a ton of Republicans also voted to voted to expel George Santos and stuff. Yeah. So we just have a five seat lead and I think it's now down to one. Yeah. Can't state enough how cruel and terrible much of the D.C. Republican class is. It's not about country. Never was. Instead of seeing out the end of their term, they can't wait to bolt to CNN and get paid bashing Republicans. Repulsive. Yeah. So when I hear this, I just assume that Ken Buck and others who step down in a weird situation like this at a weird time and doesn't make any sense. You got to assume they're being blackmailed. Uh, that's my first thought as either well. Either by China or our greatest ally. They fell for one of those prostitution <laughs> dens, you know, yeah. in, in D.C., right? And they go, oops, yeah, I guess I will step down now. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't check the ID on that prostitute, huh? Yeah. So it's full-blown sabotage and blackmail, uh, unfortunately. That's what it has to be. Yeah. Well, let's move on. We're still in housekeeping. We have a lot to get to. Make sure you guys use the opportunity to help us tickle the post. Help us juice the algo. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Then leave a comment again where you start talking about what you want to talk about. Notifications need to be on. Uh, help us with our last episode, too. Our last episode got age restricted right out of the gate. Uh, so we're having a hard time recovering that one. So, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you watch it. And last but not least, make sure you send us stuff to the P.O. Box. We need free shit from viewers like you. Thanks. Uh, all right. We have a little bit and of hold a... hold on. Before we go on for the Ken Buck shit, like, isn't Bob Menendez a current senator from New Jersey who had, like, bricks of gold in his house and still just absolutely won't resign? Yeah. He had, like, gold bars sent to him in, like, in the linings of jackets, Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. Classic. <laughs> Above one... board shit, dude. George Santos yeah. needs to go. What did George Santos do again? I don't know. I think he probably did do something, but and then campaign Buck, misappropriations or something. Ken Buck, George Santos, they need to go. Menendez, literal gold bar transactions. Yeah. He's good. He's a Democrat. Yeah. We don't, we don't blackmail anybody, Republicans. Uh, we should. We need to. Get fucking, let's get busy. People need to get tough. Yeah. Let's get busy. Let's start blackmailing people. It's so much it's so much more fun to play that way. I know. It's hardball. That's <laughs> we, called hardball. Yeah, we're not going to blackmail. We're above that. We're going to wait until the election comes. And then and get then fucking smoked. Get our vote canceled out by some girl with blue hair. Yeah. And then the rest of the fake votes they sent through the machine. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're honorable. All right. Haiti. Shit's popping off in Haiti. Yeah. General Barbecue, right? Yeah. We got General Barbecue, who we like. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey. We very, very rarely do we get a nice warlord elevated to, yeah. you know, mainstream status. So, I mean, you take them as they come. I think the last one was General Butt Naked from Africa. That's wow. the guy who I remember. Yeah, and he yeah. ran into battle Butt Naked. Is that what he did? Yeah. General Butt Naked. Coney, does he count? Yeah. He was an antagonist, though. Yeah. I yeah. guess they all are. So yeah. I like the warlords because they had the same guns I do. Exactly. And then very rarely, th this is, it's a once in a generation thing. You know, mm -hmm. Haiti hasn't seen a warlord since probably the French Revolution where when they fought the French and then kind of executed them all. That's a good point. Well, so. let's get into it. Uh, in Haiti, we are expecting a surge of migrants, according <laughs> to this lady at a hearing. Yeah. Look what she said about it. So what's the difference between Haiti and a failed state? It's telling, right? We can't really identify them because the gangs are in charge. The government has been thrown out. And 
as a Florida man, I'm deeply concerned about this wave of people that we're about to have, that we are having, coming from Haiti, and it will accelerate. What are we doing to prepare for that wave and to ensure that these people are not paroled into the United States as the administration has done with people on the southern border, but instead are repatriated back at the dock at Port-au-Prince? Congressman, we're doing a number of things to ensure that we're keeping track of the situation and we're prepared. At the moment, we have not yet seen large numbers, what we would characterize as a, as a maritime mass migration, um, but we are alert to that. mass migration, though? We are, we are alert to that possibility. Um, I think you're right uh, that the, the driving conditions in Haiti could very well press more people. So Yeah, so obviously the country falls apart, and that's going to lead to a lot of people wanting to get out. Mm -hmm. And when they want to get out, where do they go? They come here. Everyone knows that. And then people. And there's a. It's a split island. It's the Dominican Republic and Haiti. They yeah. don't. The Dominican Republic doesn't let them in. They bust them back over. And so America is what the bag holder in the end. Oh yeah, because we're well, too nice. We're the ones getting stuck with them. And then when we call it out, NBC News writes things like Elon Musk and right wing influencers use cannibal claims to smear Haitian migrants amid crisis. And they're not even migrants yet. They're still yeah. on Haiti. They, it's an island. They so you're left. confirming they're coming by yeah. calling them migrants. They, and there is cannibalism going on. I saw a video of a guy eating another dude's dick. I I saw multiple, and they're not even that hungry. They're just engaging in nibbles. It's like yeah. finger foods. It's it's a show of power. And Haiti's average IQ is in the 60s. Oh, yeah. And they're cannibals, which I guess would count as zombies. I think that's <laughs> the <this> first. <laughs> that's at least how a zombie outbreak starts, right? Yeah. So, uh, and also, here's, like, yeah, here's some pictures of the gangs. Ski mask. 80% of the country's money is in the possession of gangs. Really? Yeah. That's a lot. And uh, obviously, the new leader, Barbecue, he's up to some stuff. Keep in mind, I don't know much about Haiti, but I do know that Haiti used to be owned by France yeah. back in the day, and right? They, and then they revolted violently and killed all the French people. And they revolted violently. But at the time, Haiti was one of the, I think, the wealthiest colony and one of the wealthiest places in the entire planet. Yeah, wow. And then NBC News says the Haitian Revolution that culminated in 1804 was the most successful slave revolt in modern history, which is them just killing all the white people. Yeah. Yeah, the colonizers. Yeah, so, they so kill of all the course NBC people. likes that. They know? like that. They think that's good. And Regardless then, of what happens with the leadership for, of the country for the next two hundred years, yeah, you know, which has been in constant turmoil. Hillary Clinton had a, even a finger in there, yeah, dipping it in. So constant turmoil. The country falls apart. Now it's ran by gangs and cannibals. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's a good revolution to get those white people out. Good thing you guys did. And then what'd you do with the with your freedom? At least they're the leaders of the violent cannibal gangs. Yeah, that's true. Nobody else is doing it for him. And then uh, Trump called uh, Haiti and other countries like it a shithole country, yeah. and everyone came out. Washington Post, this is how ignorant you have to be to call Haiti a shithole. Then you have Conan O'Brien and Bill Maher going on about Haiti so great. Dwight from The Office was a huge defender. Yeah. Well, looks like a shithole to me. Yeah. You know, it's got nice beaches. Still a shithole. Yeah, exactly. You know, if nobody can manage it, if uh, there's a constant power vacuum and struggle, it's kind of a shithole. I don't know what your definition is, but ours is pretty simple. Yeah. So can you get eaten there or no? <laughs> that's like that's the bar. Do the people there hate you and want to eat you? Yeah. When they killed all the white people, they killed like light skinned black people too. Oh, it was if it, if it was close, they killed you. Tie goes to the to the darker. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's basically what happened. So for some reason, we need to bring these people here, and th that's been going on. That's been the trend as well, bringing sixty IQ people to America. Uh, Tennessee released some stats about their migration. The number one place they received migrants from illegals uh, was from Congo. Yeah, Congo tops the national origin list for refugees resettled in Tennessee this year. And it's not even a huge number, I want to say that. It's like 264 or something in the article. But, you know, once they settle that little group, you've seen what happens to the Somalians in Minnesota. Exactly. It's the cha chain migration party starts. Exactly. So oh, Minnesota my cousin, my brother, my husband is in Congo. Yeah. And all of a sudden you have uh, little Somalia, little Congo. Exactly. And Minnesota is the blueprint that they're kind of copying. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Congo is the rape capital of the world. Yeah, it's like one of the most violent countries there is. So a lot of people uh, thought that they were going to sell their house and get away to Tennessee. Yeah. And the bad guys know about that plan. Yeah, they're, they're working on it. Oh, the based red state. It's yeah. like, oh, the federal government run by Joe Biden here. We're telling you what we're going to stuff in. And that's part of the thing, too, is America is becoming like crisis happens anywhere. Doesn't matter. It could be the farthest point away from America on the map. 
And uh, we immediate there. Oh, it's a humanitarian crisis. We need to wake up. Congress immediately starts sending them money, right? Then the people immediately come here. They skip over every country on earth to come here. So America is currently backstopping all of the world's problems just indefinitely forever, Mm -hmm. right? And so like how many of the world's lowest, you know, type quality of people can we really backstop until we become that? Not a lot. And not a lot. There's a tipping point. And uh, we're experimenting with when that tipping point comes, right? Yeah. And the big difference is if you're a refugee, you go to the first safe country you can get to. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm just out of the missiles now. Like, oh, thank you so much. Can I get a water? Yeah. And instead, it's just let me do everything I can to get to America. Exactly. And obviously, these migrants, too, that are coming in hordes, they're also bringing with them disease. There's a measles outbreak going on. That, which is something we haven't really seen in this country in a long time. Yeah, in Chicago, measles, major measles outbreak uh, reported in U.S. as migrant shelters become infectious disease breeding grounds. And uh, there were multiple cases in Chicago. And you know Chicago, transportation hub of America. Mm. You can get a train pretty much anywhere from Chicago. So good luck, everybody else. Yeah, bubonic plague soon. <laughs> Part two. Yeah. Um, and then there's something else I want to add to this. In the last piece of this section, we don't have a huge migrant section today. The attitude of the migrants I've noticed in all Western countries has been not the best. They're not grateful. They're not like, oh, this is so much better than my home country. I can't wait to assimilate. Thank you so much. I'm going to get off of the benefits as fast as possible and become uh, an American or a British citizen or whatever. They kind of don't have that attitude. They almost have an entitled attitude, like the white people owe them. So this is their right to kind of invade another country. Mm -hmm. And I found this man in the street video where a guy was interviewing uh, migrant children in the UK and was saying, if you were a professional soccer player, football player, uh, what country would you play for? And look how they answered. Let's say you guys grow up to become football players. What countries are you going to represent? I'm going to try St. Kitts and Nevis and then play the rest of my career with Canada. Probably Nigeria because it's my home country, in it, so I have to represent them. Exactly. I was going to ask you, Nigeria or England? Why not England? Because got to stay loyal to my country. Nice. Nice. Yeah. The other kid, the first kid had two different countries that come before the country he's currently living in. You got to stay loyal to your country. Well, why don't you stay there and fix it? Yeah. You should strive to make it better. Instead, you fled to England. I don't know what happened. Yeah. And then while they do and that. These guys don't want to be taxpayers more than we do. Yeah. They want to suck it up. That's based. I know. <laughs> it's like based in a backwards way. It's like they really hate taxes. <laughs> exactly. And then while this is going on. Uh, the powers that be protect the migrants and not the native people. There was this little meme that went around about some uh, justice in the UK. 21st century British justice, right? So this guy uh, posted a racist comment on Facebook. He got 15 weeks in prison, sold anti-immigration stickers, got two years in jail. And then this person raped a 12-year-old girl, 180 community hours, no yep. prison time. Yeah. Al Suami. Yep. Thanks. And guys. you know, the same people who talked about a rape culture or something. Yeah. Imported cultural rapists and they don't even punish them. And then they're enforcing hate speech laws to arrest the native white people. Yeah. And we've for, already been opposing the horrible immigration problem. Yeah. And we've already been over how they don't publish pictures because it would be damaging and they call them Southeast Asian rape mm. gangs and grooming gangs. So, yeah. It's ugly. It's getting ugly. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. We're moving on. We're in Schizo Corner now. Oh. Macron's wife, Emmanuel Macron, obviously he dates that old woman. Yeah. Who oh. used to be his teacher. Yeah. And when he so was either 15, way, it's a baseline level of fucked up. Right? Yeah. There's something going on here. Uh, can you give a read to this guy's theory? Yes, and this is just a theory. This is not Richard Ratboy's opinion. This is a <laughs> screenshotted schizo tweet in Schizo Corner. So have some perspective, right? Alert, is the First Lady of France actually a man? Is Macron gay? According to a researcher, Bridget Macron was born as Jean-Michel Trogneau, a man, but President Macron's wife said she was being targeted by a transphobic rumor and she would file a complaint. The source of this information on Brigitte Macron's past life was in articles published in September in the journal Fits et Documents, citing extensive evidence of a massive cover-up about a trans figure in the Elise. Uh, France's first lady dismissed it as a conspiracy theory. On French social networks, the hashtag Jean-Michael Trogneau 
has been trending for several weeks now. On November 7th, the Twitter account Le Journal de la Macroni launched the quest for finding Bridget's lost brother, who has disappeared without a trace. Hashtag has generated close to 80,000 mentions, in particular on anti-tax and far-right accounts, noted the Visbrain site. So, and if you look at the picture, they look alike. This is pretty compelling. This is, <laughs> you have the way to the other guy, oh. and it's basically that. And then that would mean Emmanuel Macron is gay, which would explain this picture of him and Justin Trudeau. This AI-generated cock-grabbing picture of him and Justin Trudeau with the Eiffel Tower portrait in the background. I'm, I think we got him. Pretty compelling stuff again, <laughs> I, have, I must say. And, dude, I don't know. Candace Owens did a whole video on this. Nice. And, you know, sometimes people don't do videos like that unless you kind of have an ace in the hole. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. But uh, at least she's not fearful of getting sued for libel or anything. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's why we put it in Schizo Corner. And obviously, if this plays out and it is true, mm -hmm. it would be planting the seed for the big Mike Obama reveal. Smart. Yeah. So they got to do this first, see how it works, see how the public handles it or where it goes viral or who the biggest proponents of spreading the info are. Handle that. And then when big Mike Obama announces, they can kind of have a little dry run already. Smart. Yeah. But that picture of him and Justin Trudeau. That was crazy. That's you, you got you dead to rights. Yeah, you're grabbing his cack and making out with him, and your faces yeah. are a little warped. Also, the name, kind of a tangent, the name Justin. Yeah. Kind of like a teenager's name. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. 13 with a BMX bike. Justin. Oh, I'm Justin. It's like you're the leader of the Come on. Canada. Prime Minister, get out of here. Doesn't seem right. Do that don't sound right. All right, we're moving on. In bonus land, we are going to be doing some more Conspiracy Corner. Is Joe Biden being played by Jim Carrey? Some pretty compelling stuff on that, too. We got videos. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we're also going to go over um, Rabbi Shmuley versus Candace Owens. There's some yeah. beef going on there between her and Rabbi Shmuley. Yeah. We'll tell you what side we're on for that. All right, moving on. There was a Boeing story. Obviously, Boeing jets are falling out of the sky. No one knows how to make them because of all the DEI people they hired, I'm yep. assuming. Uh, but there was like a hidden camera recording where someone was the whole people that work at Boeing are saying they would never let their family fly in the planes. This is a Boeing factory in the U.S. state of South Carolina. Workers here in Charleston are assembling the company's flagship product, the 787 Dreamliner. But this footage reveals some have little faith in the plane they build. Did you fly on one? You won't fly one. Did you fly one of these planes? Of 15 workers asked randomly, 10 said they would not fly on the Dreamliner. That's pretty bad. That's damning. That's compelling stuff as well. Yeah, and they're building the plane. In South Carolina. Great. They're building the plane and saying they won't fly in it. And then there also was a whistleblower a few days ago who worked at Boeing for like, I think, 20 or 30 years. Mm-hmm. And then he committed suicide in his hotel room. Yeah. So then someone had a tweet that was pretty good. Upgrading Boeing to a buy after they assassinated a whistleblower in the middle of his deposition. <laughs> yeah, that's I pretty, mean, that's hey, pretty bullish. Shareholder value comes here at the tip. Employee <laughs> wellness down here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, something to keep in mind. There seems like there's a bad batch of planes out there. And it sucks because obviously this isn't. They sell the planes to every single airline. It's Boeing or Airbus. That's it, basically. And so if we lose Boeing, what do we do? Uh, every plane you get on is basically a 737 or something. So I guess we'll have to get it from China. Or just exclusively fly on 80-year-old planes mm. or 40-year-old, you know, the 747, and they're phasing those out too. But at least we could trust them. Yeah, we're in trouble. Yeah. It ain't pretty. Speaking of not pretty and being in trouble, uh, trillions of cicadas are coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the convergence year of two broods, I think. The so basically the cicadas go under the ground in groups mm -hmm. for years at a time. There's one that's been underground for 13 years and one that's been underground for 18 years. And both are coming out of the ground at the same time. And the number's in the trillions. Yeah. And I think it's the first time since the 1800s. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I you have experience, right? They were in New York, cicadas. Yeah, as a kid, I, I, had, I had cicada experience. Playing with the corpses, the exoskeletons. Yep, and then this is obviously, this could be like an end times prophecy type situation. Mm -hmm. 
And there's also a solar eclipse happening at the same time above where the cicadas are coming out. On April 8th, 2024, so in like three weeks, the solar eclipse is crossing the entire country right above where all the cicadas come out, happening all at the same time. Something's going on. Yeah. If a Native American saw that in the Great Plains in 1804. And then all the bugs come out. The human sacrifices start. You know, like (laughs) there's nothing left. They're not happy with us. The gods are not happy. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to something a little more lighthearted. Speaking of solar. Okay. uh, This guy is a solar panel salesman. And he has a tip for us that we can apply to our lives, whether you're a solar panel salesman or not. You're not knocking doors because there's no cars in the driveway. You're leaving so much meat on the bone. Oh, but I'm strategic. I'm like a hunter. I didn't tell you how many sales I have from houses that didn't have any cars in the driveway. In fact, the deal I sold yesterday didn't have any cars in the driveway. They were in the garage. But go ahead. Don't knock them. That way I could come and eat up. Let's go. <laughs> He's going to eat your lunch. He slurps it up. He's slurping it. There's a certain kind of false bravado that the door-to-door salesmen need to have. And it's like a facade. And you can tell this guy's like, yeah, let's go. I'll do it. He's like, was that good enough? You know, you just know yeah. he doesn't even believe it himself. And then he have, they have like their scripts and their technique. And it's like their technique is kind of like how to strong arm a lady. Uh, a stay-at-home wife yeah. whose husband isn't home right now. It's like, you want to cut your power bill, right? And yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you say yes, and then you're into the next leg of his sale. And it's like, yeah, you're tired of paying for high power bills, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. But that was pretty profound. And it makes you wonder, where in our lives are we not knocking because we see an empty driveway? Okay. All right. So do you have an example of one? No. I watched the video. I watched the video. So I don't do that anymore. Of course. Of course. But there could be people out there maybe in their lives who are leaving some opportunity on the table because they think they know better. Yeah. I watched the video. I'm not doing it. You guys did too. Now there's no excuses. All right. Smart. All right. We're almost done with housekeeping. Last, uh, Second to last thing. There's a cat dating profile. And someone said something funny. They said it reminded them of a leftist trying to find a date said this cat adoption post reads like a leftist guy's dating profile love bug alert needs forever home meet soy soy is eight month old neutered up to date on vaccines looking for a forever home (laughs) all right that's pretty good i like when they make the connection like that yeah um i just needed to get that on the record you know smart all right last piece of housekeeping uh nicholas cage national treasure nicholas cage says national treasure three is not happening if you want to find treasure, don't look at Disney. It's not there. Disney dropped the ball then. Yeah. Because National Treasure, such a shame that they're not doing it, is such a good series. A lot of people, me, maybe you guys too, learned more about history from National Treasure than they did from any class or any book they've ever read in their whole life. Weren't You were a history major at an Ivy League school. Yeah. And are you telling me that... That national treasure taught you more than your college degree. It's that good. Yeah, it's that good. So Disney would rather make some mermaid black or something than uh, bring up this actual series that people like. Yeah. Isn't that a shame? That was that was so good. That and Da Vinci Code, man. Yeah, those were two good ones. Well, that is the end of our housekeeping. Moving on to cringe of the week. All right, our first clip of Cringe of the Week. We have a student freakout from Arizona State. A person uh, looks like a street preacher type, had a sign, a a Christian sign, and look at the response from this student. Hey, wait, you don't like it? Yeah! Hey. Yeah! Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark, Mark, leave him alone. Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark, leave him alone. Back off. You bitch! Back off. Fuck you! Leave him alone, Mark. Hey, Mark, just stand there. Mark, Mark, just, Mark, Mark, stay there. Uh, you get the point. Yeah, and that's freaking. It gets a little more helpless attacks, and, you know, they eventually settle it, right? When I walk down the street and see something I don't like, say it's like a person trying to, like, raise money for Planned Parenthood, maybe I make a little comment and just walk on. Yeah. That? The freak out attacking someone when you're clearly not physically capable of attacking someone? Yeah, interesting approach. Well, that's kind of like a believe-in-yourself type thing. Like, if this... Retard. 
<laughs> is physically attacking people and screeching at the top of your lungs, you can stand up to the school board, you know? Yeah. You can stand up to the stupid shit in your kid's life or the dumb baseball coach. You know what I mean? I wish I had the confidence of this guy. The passion, the confidence, the zero effectiveness, obviously. Yeah. But uh, it, it, it's, it shows you something there. And the first thing I thought of this, like I thought of feudal England or, mm. you know, feudal Europe. Some people are just meant to be serfs. Oh, subjects, yeah. Subjects, absolute subject of some feudal lord. This guy should be somebody, someone's subject. That's what I'm saying. He should just be giving 10% of his grain to the boss. Yeah, that's smart. Simple farming life. There's no need for you to go to college if this yeah, is your emotional yeah. intelligence level and stuff like that's that. That's a good point. So, and, you know, a lot of uh, money to go there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's still, it's a state school, but you got to get your higher education so I can go be a normal person in society. Yep. Mm. Kind of a retard. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it's not going to work. All right, moving on. There was a climate change interpretive dance. We're only going to play a little bit of it, but it's pretty interesting. Um, all I'm going to say, climate change sucks. The whole thing summarized. Okay. okay. A truth. We walk the earth harnessing. We walk it branding and capturing our own exhumation peels back to reveal a femur and ulna locked together by joint stirrups. We are made of subjugation. The only authority we acknowledge is our own monstrosity. It's, it's interpretive dance, but it's like, what are we interpreting? Nothing you're doing is going with the words. I didn't see one move that correlated with anything that she was talking it's like, about. like, oh, we're walking. You could have been like... And then we got to peel back the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you didn't do anything like that. You just did a separate dance move that wasn't even good. Yeah. And this, uh, talk about going paying your parents paying for you to go to college. Yeah. What is this? UC libraries, University of California, the yeah. UC system. Exactly. 40K a year for this shit. Toodles to the, hey, a life of debt and squalor awaits from you and a barista job is at the end of the rainbow. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what to tell you, right? Yeah. And I found that clip in the wild too. What, what? Sometimes you find them on cringe pages. I my my algo right now is sending me like hundred like or less in the wild clips. Is that what it was? A hundred likes? Maybe oh. less, maybe sixty. You gotta reward that algo to stay in there. Yes. Yeah. That's bad. Keep sending me that. Interpretive um, dance. All right. We well, don't need interpretive dance. The words, the heavy handed poetry, it's already enough. Yeah. The point came across, right? <laughs> exactly. The stuff you said was pretty on the nose. This is also another thing where um you you know uh, the art of kicking ass, the subtle art of not giving a fuck. When mm. we made fun of like millennial cringe humor, she goes, well, the whole point of this, climate change sucks. That's the gist of it. It's like there's no, you guys aren't even saying anything, you know? It, it, it pisses me off. And women mm. are swearing more. I don't know. Yeah, me too. All right, well, let's go to another clip that'll probably make people pissed off. Uh, there is an LGBT club in a middle school for third to sixth graders that parents didn't know about. Third grade, I will refresh your guys' memory before we play the clip, is eight years old. Eight. Parents at Elk Grove's Pleasant Grove Elementary School say they were alarmed to discover a third grade teacher was allowed to personally invite all the third through sixth grade classes to a new LGBT club he was starting called the UBU Club. Education activist Heidi Moore discusses the club. Their children were essentially being recruited, some as young as second grade, um, by a teacher there. And he was going around telling them that if they, um, it was a club for boys who crush on boys or girls who crush on girls, but that anyone could come because there were fun games that you couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah, anyone can come because the LGBT blah, 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 is so broad now that we'll find a place for you. Yeah, we'll slip you in somewhere. <laughs> we'll assign you a role. Third grader, eight-year-old. Yeah, literal eight-year-old. And what we notice, and we've said this before, the when there's a when there's a black child with absent parents, mm -hmm. they go violence and become like a thug. Sure. And the streets some, raise them. Some. Some. You know, you're more prone to join a gang and rob a store when you're a teenager and get guns. When you're a white person or a white kid with absent parents, you go LGBT. Yeah, there's a whole internet thing, furries, traps, you get into some weird shit, you experiment mm -hmm. a little bit, and uh it leads you down a dark path. And the thing that obviously this is a grown adult men talking to eight and seven year olds about a secret club that you don't tell your parents about, but you got to come because you can't get these games anywhere else. You know, mm. it's like one of the tenets of being sexually assaulted and stuff is 
someone telling you to keep a secret from your parents. Mm. It's like, now this is our little secret, right? That's a good point. So, I mean, why is this any different? And, yeah. And, and there was a parent who actually had a, I don't say a bit. It's kind of a podcast bit. It was like a podcast bit, yeah. This is him addressing the school board. If this school board had existed in 2005, you'd all be the villains in an episode of Criminal Minds. That's pretty good. And he walks. <laughs> and, and he, he walks, walks off. off he doesn't want any uh, interaction or rebuttal. You guys would be criminals in the Criminal Minds show. Yeah. It's a classic show, too. It is. Um, well, there is some uplifting within this cringe section. Huntington Beach, California, bans all flags besides the American flag. Early election results show voters of Huntington Beach voted in support of Measure B. Essentially, it amends the municipal charter to ban all non-governmental flags from flying on city property. This comes after the city council passed an ordinance last year, reversing the policy of flying the rainbow flag on city buildings in June. But the move means... Hey, I'd love to see ask. that. Yeah. That's a W, and it's in California. Huntington Beach, obviously, is more conservative than most places in California, but it's good to see that. So for every third grade LGBT secret club there secret is... Secret club, secret. <laughs> we have... Um, a city that's fighting to stay based, right? Yeah, a city that where the government buildings aren't going to fly a gay flag. Yeah. And that's one of the things, too, is like the gay flag. Like, what made you think you could get in and do that? Like, oh, no, no, my pet project, it can go on the federal or, you know, the local state. Yeah, we're hanging this one up. Yeah, this one goes up. We made a decision, me and my, the HR lady. Are you a general in the military? Yeah. (laughs) At what point did you think putting your flag was going to be fine? So uh, you love to see it, but obviously this is going to make the neighboring town two times more gay. Yeah, that's that's how they do it. That's the response. That is that's a great point. They see it as a direct threat. Huntington Beach did it. We're next, and then they make it twice as gay. And they so. go, "We're gonna only hang the pride flags exactly. on every flagpole." <laughs> exactly. That it's, ah, you can't even get a W. Yep. All right. Last clip of cringe: a Chick Fil A freakout. So this woman is a Door Dasher, and I guess this is a racist interaction. Let us know what you guys think. Me, I'm standing here. Because something is wrong with you people. Y'all do this all the time that I come in here. How can I serve you, ma'am? Sorry. I'm getting a DoorDash order for Ryan. Okay. Y'all do this all the time that I come in here. Every single time. This time I'm a document it. And then uh, DoorDash see. order for Ryan. I'm waiting. Let me check on that right now. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, just sit there right there. What was that? Just sit there right there. And y'all do that all the time. All the time. Can you go ahead? No, I'm not. Unfortunately, that's our policy, too. No, it's not. Yes. No, it's not. You're going to have to confirm the order for picking up. I, I confirm it all the time. Every time when I get to the door, I confirm my order. You people are the only ones that do this. So Chick-fil-A clearly has a policy where you have to confirm on the phone the order before they hand it off, before they hand off the DoorDash order for Ryan to this woman. To any random person, right? Yeah. This prevents any random person from impersonating a DoorDash driver and stealing food from Chick-fil-A. It's a pretty simple (laughs) thought process, right? Yeah. Good thing those workers weren't white or else this would be... A race incident. A race incident for sure. But you can kind of tell who has the power in society. Like once this lady starts filming... It's like a little sneak peek behind the curtain. She knows she has the power and she's filming and she's looking for these guys to slip up in a little way so she can come down on a with a, on them with a viral clip and get them basically fired and ruin their life. Despite the entire time being dead wrong. Yeah. That like this is just a policy that has nothing to do with you. We're tired of getting stuff stolen from Chick-fil-A from randoms walking in. And I like the manager who comes and goes, all right, she's getting a little attitude and filming. Yoink, I'm going to put this back until someone calms down and cooperates, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So her having to confirm that she's the door dasher and the the transaction going not perfectly as smoothly as she wants mm-hmm. is another piece of evidence proving that she's a victim of racism in an oppressed society, I guess. And this is Chick-fil-A. This isn't Wendy's. This isn't some shitty independently run McDonald's. Chick-fil-A has a brand and like a style and the customer is always right. The only time the customer isn't right is when the customer's dead backwards wrong. (laughs) So, I mean, it's more of a reflection on her. And I don't get these people, this type of existence where it's like, no, I'm getting a little pushback. I can't think through it. I'm going to film and cause a scene. Yeah. And if I was doing this job and I went into Chick-fil-A, 
I would expect to show something yeah. before I pick up 50 bucks worth of food. Order for Ryan. Yeah. Order from Ryan. Order for Ryan. You don't it's sound like, like a Ryan. And yeah. I know that's probably the customer's name. But we're obviously going to need to confirm on your phone, and then we'll give you the whole bag of food, and you're yeah. going to be on your way. If you're the DoorDash driver, your screen will show a big, giant, glowing order. Yeah. Pick up here now. That's and not good enough for her. Yeah. She needs it handed she off. She needs them to trust. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, the last 50 people who stole food yeah. <laughs> kind of looked like you. All right. Well, that's the end of Cringe. It's a lighter Cringe. Moving on to Urban Decay. Three pages of Urban. Uh, black women are under attack. This is Richard's... Uh, Urban Decay Project. Yeah, well, basically, you know, there's kind of the theme of this is trying to figure out the source of a problem, but then not really doing it the right way or not digging into the right thing. And Mm -hmm. so this was inspired by an NBC book article, NBC BLK. It's like the new BET subsection for NBC that's just for black people. Um, And it says, in the U.S., black women are six times more likely to be killed than their white counterparts, troubling new data reveals. It's not new. Yeah, killed by killed by who? In, in some state, the rate is even higher. For example, in Wisconsin, black women were twenty times more likely to be killed. And so, I, I'm just going to go over some of the things from this article, right? Because we're not going to read the whole thing, but we're looking at, into the mind of a leftist, right? And what they think could explain a huge discrepancy in murders, right? Uh, to help eradicate domestic violence, caught. Cotman said more people should start by normalizing conversations about it, whether at school, church, or other black institutions. So, yeah, domestic violence. Okay, that's fair. Mm -hmm. All right, that's probably leads to it. Uh, For every one person who's murdered, you've got their family members, you've got friends, you've got communities who are devastated. So if you're looking at that through that lens, what does that mean for our black families, right? So obviously this affects a lot of people, right? When Mm. someone dies or someone's murdered, it's crazy. But then some of the reasons that they're they're trying to justify or describe why black women are getting murdered more frequently, when you don't have access to housing, you've got a greater strain on the relationship. When you're already living in an impoverished community, you have a greater strain on your relationship. Then you tie all that together with having increased homicides and access to firearms for young people. And then they also say that many black women also have a fear of calling law enforcement, which puts them at greater risk. It's the, co- it's the white cop's fault. So it's the cops. It's domestic violence, which, you know, that's true. You you lead it in. But housing and then being afraid of cops. Is that does that explain a 20 times more likely to be murdered in Wisconsin or six times nationwide? Do, do those two little factors explain it? That's weird. And it doesn't the answer is obviously no. And most murders happen within the race. Right. Yeah. In very rare instances. And so what you have here is black men for the most part murdering black women. And so why does that happen? Is there a tendency for violence? Do we not lock them up enough? Are we letting violent criminals back on the street too much? And it's like, that's me and Fleckus, our first thought. Wow, there's a lot of violent black men who are out there killing people who probably had some priors, probably had some run-ins with the law, and they weren't kept in jail. But and then because of defund police, we got to let everyone out. Yeah. And so now someone's dead. And then like the article said, they talk about how, how many family members and how how many downhill effects there are of this murder, which is true. Every murder is like the worst crime that there is. It's the most irreversible thing. But the, the funny part is the author looking for any reason except for there's violence in the black community, right? Yeah. Like if you use that family member angle, it's like, okay, how many black families are related to someone who's doing crime or has an illegal gun or is up to bad stuff after school with their ski masks on? Or has a no snitching or we don't talk to the police thing. Or it's sells like- drugs. Like everyone knows. And then you ignore that. And then it hurts your own community. And then you go, oh, our community is getting hurt. And instead of saying, who's it getting hurt by? You go, oh, it's getting hurt. White people, white people must oh, be because they're afraid of the cops or because scared to call the cops. We don't have housing. It's like there are white people with really bad housing who don't murder each other. Yeah. Um, and then so uh, this is just an example, but this was a case from I think le- late last week. But there was an Alabama woman, Mahogany Jackson, and she was stripped, tortured, forced to perform sex acts on gang of four men and four women before being shot in the back of the head in sickening kidnapping and murder that they filmed, cops say. Mm. So this woman was brutally murdered, brutally sexually assaulted and executed and left for dead, right? By eight people. A group of eight 
people, here's the mug shots here. They were all willing to participate in what they knew was, was a felony. The worst crimes. Even up until the point of the execution. Oh, dude, I didn't know he was going to shoot him. They were all participating and engaging in a brutal sexual assault felony. Mm. And so it's like, did these people have access to housing? Were these people afraid of cops? You know, yeah. all these questions that an NBC BLK writer might ask, but you don't ask the simple ones. Maybe there's just a lot more people in that community willing to commit a heinous act. Yeah. Which is like the the most obvious answer you can have, right? Yeah, exactly. And then what gets reported is black woman murderedness after being assaulted. And you kind of like or leave it to the viewer to decide what happened. Black mm -hmm. women are under attack. Oh, this is just a piece in this bigger article about how black women are killed at a higher rate. But then you don't go into the details of who's doing the actual killing. And if you look at the stats on guns. Here's the uh, 2022 homicide victimization rate per 100, 100K. 100K. Yeah. Young black men aged 15 to 34 die by gun homicide 20 times as often as young white men, according to CDC cause of death statistics, 50 times as often as Asians, and 5.5 times as often as their Hispanic peers. It's almost as, as if black men have a gun problem, gun crime problem, and should do something about it. 20 times more likely to die by gun than white people. It's like, hey, David Hugg. Aren't you obsessed with gun violence and stopping people from dying from guns? It's weird that he keeps focusing on like the random one off school shootings that are like so random that are so impossible to predict who's going to have like a psychosis snap and try to shoot up a school and who also has access to guns. You know, like the, the one off school shooting school shooters where they hit a breaking point. It's so impossible to predict that behavior. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like, obviously, those are all horrendous. Um, they, but then you have these guns where people are selling guns on Instagram live and people are in gangs and shooting each other and Chicago's a mess. And David Hogg doesn't talk about that at all. Exactly. And in fact, it's the opposite. When a lot of these thugs and gangsters go and get arrested, a lot of times Democrat DAs and prosecutors knock down their charges. Yeah. So they use a gun to rob somebody instead of doing armed robbery. It's just uh, it's just robbery. The, they, the, they knock down the charges to get the people back out. Yeah. The enhancements, as they call them, gang yeah. enhancements, which aren't used under in L.A. right now. Uh, Gascon, he doesn't add gang enhancements. You remember we showed that video where mm -hmm. all the other DAs running. They said, yes, we want gang enhancements. Um, but this was a point Cernovich had made, which was, where's David Hogg? Very easy to stop a lot of gun violence. He won't say anything about this, though. And this was uh, from an Andy No tweet where he said, many gang members use Instagram stories to boast about their activities. Chicago man John Hernandez, who has a long history of firearm and gang-related arrests. You know, these people post themselves. They're tipping their hand. And, like, uh, the example that I used to you uh, off screen was – I remember the story about some sex trafficking people who worked to arrest and defeat and find sex traffickers. And they had like this whole database of hotel room blinds and like pictures that they could analyze and determine where this crime had occurred. And like, those are people who are actually out there doing something, right? They're not preaching. They're not, they're going in and they're saying, okay, this, this looks like this hotel. I think there's one in southeastern Tennessee or something. Mm -hmm. It's like David Hogg and his buddies could be doing that, but they just want to disarm law-abiding citizens. They want to go after the NRA. Yeah. These, it, these aren't NRA members, David Hogg. Yeah. They're criminals. They're gang members. And they're actually incredibly stupid and easy to find if someone wants to put the work in. Yeah, exactly. But he wants to focus on the random impossible to prevent one-off. So that's – exactly. So that's the main thing. It's like, oh – Who's killing all these black women? It's like, mm, it's probably housing affordability and uh, fear of talking to the cops. No, it's just black men who are violent, who might need to be locked up longer. Yeah, it's black men with guns. And then who who's doing all the gun crimes? It's like inner city gang members. You can't predict a school shooting and someone snapping, you know? Exactly. But everyone just wants to go with the narrative that black people are being hunted down. Look, they're being killed. Look at these murder rates. But they don't say by who. They want to blame it on white people and white cops. Mm -hmm. uh, in our next page of Urban, uh, we have a bunch of crimes that were committed, and we know by who. Uh, first is this woman who was a pizza delivery driver, and she was murdered by three people for $27. Mother of two, murdered by three people. The three-way split, $27. Can you do some math really quick? What's that? $9.99. $9.99 each, a little bit, or close to no, it. No, no, it's just $9.99. Yeah. $9. Oh, $9. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. $9 each. Yeah, and here's the mugshots, you know, and here's the here's the victim shot. 
mother of two toddlers and um, was a pizza delivery driver. The police pulled these people over and they had the pizza with the bag, like the pizza delivery bag. Caught just dead, red, red-handed, stupidest criminals on earth. Murdered someone for nine dollars a piece. And we haven't even really heard about it. But then, whenever like a black criminal dies, like George Floyd, everyone says like, "Oh, you have a right to be upset. Like this is your chance to be heard. These are the cries of the unheard." And it's like a fentanyl overdose criminal. But then someone like this dies, you don't hear anything about it. Or the next girl. And again, that was three people who all agreed to participate in a robbery. And then, which escalated to a murder, you know? Yeah. So that's three people out there who were, were who willing to do that. killed someone's mom for $9 each. Yeah. And we don't hear anything about it. But then when a criminal dies, everyone has to take it to the streets. We had another situation where this girl was dragged under a car and killed in St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, Ellie Bentley, 22, a beautiful 22-year-old girl, um, was dragged under a car for two blocks during a hit-and-run shooting in St. Louis. She was British and just moved to the U.S. to be with her boyfriend, uh, she was a victim of a crossfire shooting and suffered multiple broken bones as a result of being dragged under a car. I don't think she died. Oh, good. Um, her attorney says she ducked under a vehicle when the shooting broke out, but the person driving the car she was under, she was hiding under, hit the gas and hit and ran her, dragged her for two blocks. And so, yeah, you know, these guys, she just got caught in an unfortunate beef between two young black males who were willing to shoot guns in the street at each other. In the, in the middle of a city. Yeah. And we're told that black people are under attack from police. And it's actually the opposite. Police are padding the stats. So the public doesn't realize how bad of a behavior problem urban youths have. Yeah. Black criminals. Visible are. black guy with dreads. There's Fleckus black guy. And, and they're, they're all labeled white. They're all being listed as white. So police are hunting us down. We're not safe. They're, they're shooting us. And they're killing us. They're hunting us. They want us dead. They're actually covering for you. They're they're padding the stats so the public doesn't realize how bad of a black crime problem there is. Yeah, but it's may- the opposite. But maybe it's because you're afraid to talk to the cops, which is why you get killed by a black guy with a gun. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And so everything seems to be white people's fault. You can't have any accountability in the black community. Everything is white people's fault at some point. Uh, And there was an interesting stat that I read. Only 7% of black male adults can read at a 12th grade level. And I guess that's white people's fault because they stole their library card. Um, I don't know. I'll wait for the article from NBC Black to tell me what to (laughs) think, right? It'll probably be because uh, water quality isn't good in the urban city centers or something like that. Or they get less good sleep because of the chirping uh, from the metal detector. Exactly. It'll be some roundabout thing that has nothing to do with, well, are they reading? Is someone reading to them at home? Do they pay attention in class? Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. We have one more page of Urban Decay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Let's see. You want to do the stolen cars? Stolen cars? Yeah, let's do stolen cars, and we'll do the injection into the brain in bonus land. Okay. I always like to show stuff like this, which is kind of like cutting edge crimes. As I say, like I like to be aware who's doing the mimicking your car keys to the Mm -hmm. front door and stealing your car. But this is a new one. This guy's just covering what's out there on Facebook marketplace. Bro, there's no way I'm on the no titles car for sale. This dude posted a 2023 Camry asking, where's the tracker? This dude just stole this shit. (laughs) Where's the tracker? I mean, there's some pretty crazy cars on here that are just straight up stolen. Stingray, C7, 6,500 cash, no title, because that bitch is stolen. Scat, if you know, you know. If you don't get what's going on, just ignore this post. $5,500. Another C7 Corvette, 5K, no title. Don't talk his head off. I don't know what happened up here. He probably tried to get it. So all the stolen cars are for five grand cash. Yeah, that's and it. They're all like 2020 and uh, and beyond new cars. Hello, police right here. Go meet with them, please. Um, but they, and, yeah, but instead the FBI is going to probably do January 6th people. Yeah. And I like the little, if you know, you know, or don't talk my head off. Like it, yeah. it is what it is. It's like, they're trying to drop subtle hints in the listing, just brutally selling stolen cars on Facebook. So, wow. That's pretty impressive. That's a, uh, you know, that's, that's a pe- that's a group of people with privilege. Exactly. You can just steal a car and sell it online and no one even stops you. <laughs> exactly. I wish I had that. It should be so difficult to this and every single buyer, prospective buyer should just be an absolute undercover cop. Yeah. But for some reason, 
it's enough to sustain like a multiple car economy. And this is just in the Philadelphia area. Yeah, exactly. All right, last piece of urban decay. Uh, this woman was approached by two 10-year-olds and they told her they needed help, and look what they did. And this is from 2022, I want to say that. Okay. This and then is... also that woman who got a uh, pizza delivery driver, the reason that was in the news is because, like, I think the trial just happened, and yeah. so that was actually, I think, in 2019. But, you know, there's a reason you never heard a peep out of it in 2019 anyway. Yep. A uh, New York woman was scammed by two 10-year-old kids. They walked up to her acting like they were lost, borrowed her phone, and sent $1,000 to themselves on Venmo. They didn't call anybody. Police told me, you gave them your phone? Why would you let a stranger use your phone? Like, the cops yeah. didn't even care. We're not in a high-trust society anymore. What are you thinking? And it said Black Lives Matter. It was like BLM 2018 or something uh, was the fake dummy Venmo account that they so, sent a thousand Reparations, to. I guess. They got us. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. Moving on to Uplifting Gold. We have some uplifting today. Nothing crazy. <laughs> uh, Our episode's gone long, though, right? Like, yeah, we're, we're good on time. Okay. Uh, first things first, uh, real life La La Land. So last week was the Oscars. Everyone knows I love La La Land, the movie. She won for acting. He won for music. They both got to see each other succeed. It's real life La La Land. It happened. I hate La La Land, so. It's La La Land. <laughs> Ryan Gosling dancing like this. Doo-doo-doo. You'll never have a bad day. I put on La La Land and it straightens me out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <fucking loser. laughs> all right well let's get to some serious uplifting stuff we had some pretty dark and heavy things in the episode we did it was a kind of greasy episode we gotta lighten it up let's haiti go. cannibals are coming to an area near you and you know why is everyone dying i don't know must be some other reason black crime crazy all this horrible stuff but don't worry this lady knows how to talk with her mouth closed ready help me i'm stuck in a closet <laughs> That's pretty good. No gun got pulled out at the end of that. Nobody got shot. (laughs) That's pretty impressive. That was pretty funny. Yeah, that's good shit. Um, All right, let's go to the Asian soccer ball kid. Look at this kid. Look at how good this kid is. This is is impressive. Kicks the ball, goes around. Through the legs, in the backpack. Almost doesn't even believe it happened. And look at that smile. Look at that smile. That's nice. That's uplifting. That cancels out a couple double murders. A couple double murders, yeah. Yep. yep. So we built up the goodwill. Yep. And then last one, actually uplifting, seven-foot football player, O-lineman. Rapoy and I were O-linemen in college, so we like to see O-linemen succeeding. This kid's seven feet tall. Watch what he does. Seven-footer. Everything is bigger in Texas. He's only a junior in high school, and he was putting kids into the turf. Oh, <laughs> His name is Tyler Roberts. He plays for Argyle High School, and he was throwing his opponents around like a rag doll. This dude can move bodies. He's so big that he made all-pro NFL lineman Daryl Williams look small. Daryl Williams said he's never seen a seven-foot lineman that can move this good. It's different! He has an 85-inch wingspan, which would already be one of the longest in the NFL. Right now, he is very underrated. He has offers from Yale, Air Force, and Dartmouth. The Houston Cougars are about ready to offer him. Let us know in the comments which college football team should pick him up. That's pretty lit. Yeah. And on our college, Dartmouth offered him. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get him. I don't think he, think he's going to get something bigger. I'm going to be honest. I think there's a reason there's not seven-foot tackles. I, I know. But you're moved. good. In, you're, you're, you're in high school. Yeah. You're good. You're pancaking kids in the drills. You're moving good. But then once you get to college, that DN comes off the line faster than you've ever seen. And he blows you up. <laughs> and he blows you up, and you're seven feet tall. Uh, there's a reason you don't see him over 6'6", really. Yeah, the center of gravity becomes an issue. But, <laughs> hey, that, honestly, this kid looked good. Like He did uh, look good. For seven-footers, most seven-footers, you, their knees bend in a little bit. It looks mm-hmm. a little freakish. Um, but I, I guess he stood tall. I, I he like did this stand kid. tall. And then when you're an old lineman, a good mark, like a mark of a good old lineman is playing to the whistle and finishing people and pancaking them. Mm-hmm. So if that kid has the instincts to, you see his shirt was ripped, he's fighting it out. That's good aggression. And then he's finishing kids playing past the whistle and pancaking them, making sure he gets on top. That's a good sign of a good lineman. He should go to, I think he should go to Dartmouth yeah. or Yale, go to an Ivy. Uh, get a good job after, have fun in college. If you go to some big school, mm-hmm. you're going to get smoked and you're not going to play. That's so true. Go to Dartmouth. 
I don't know. We'll see. We'll put, we'll we'll check in on this yeah. guy. Wish that kid the best. If he somehow is a show watcher, we'll send you some free merch. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the end of the episode. We do have shout outs because it's Friday. Uh, let's see here. Happy birthday to Suzanne K. Her birthday was on March 11th, just a few days ago. Happy birthday to you. Your daughter secretly DM'd me from your own account and got that shout out. So yeah, nice daughter. It worked. Um, happy birthday on March 12th to at face billions on Twitter. He got a shout out. He tweeted us and goes, how do I get a shout out? It's my birthday. You ask for your own shout out. That's how you do it. <laughs> Um, and happy birthday to Brooke. It was on Tuesday. She's a new show watcher because uh, Cousin Mariah is a show watcher and got her hooked. And she's now watching the show all the way through. Wow. So she's a new show watcher. And then she watched all the way to the end and realized we do shout outs. Happy to know that. Happy birthday, Brooke. Hope you're doing well. And then we have some people that gave us shout outs on some stuff. Someone wrote the Fleckus quote on an engine, which is very cool. Yeah. Uh, this was going into a, a pickup truck, I believe. Good, good. So we're going to live forever there. Yep. And then our last one, someone gave us a little Fleckas shout out in Spanish. Fleckas habla el podcast. Ranqueado como mejor podcast de todos los tiempos. Wow. Who knows what that could even mean? <laughs> <laughs> no idea what that could even possibly mean. You know what I realized, dude? I have brutal French reading. I can't read French. That yeah. Macron shit earlier. Elise. Brigitte. Elise. I, I have no instincts for French pronunciation. Elise. I know. I'm fucked. It's so. like Champs Elise. Yeah. Man, what is your problem, petit peu de Francais? You got to read the French stuff from here on out. I'll yeah. read the Espanol. Yeah. Uh, going forward, je dire le. Uh, I don't know anything. Yeah, give it up, buddy. All right. You got well, seized, didn't no, you? I got, I got worse than seized. <laughs> Um, all right, another fucking socks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you're watching to this point, you're probably going to want to watch Bonus Land, which starts right now, 30 minutes extra of the show. Fleckastalks.com is the website. It's very cheap, and you get hours and hours of bonus content, and it supports the show. And if you haven't done it already, I'm starting to question if you're even a loyal show watcher. All right, thank you guys for watching. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. We walk the earth harnessing. We walk at branding. Back off! Back off! Back off. Back off. Back off.